Good afternoon. My name is Rob Alvey, and I am pleased to be part of the Here Now 2020 Festival on the Stories About Mark Twain. Becky Thatcher found Laura Hawkins in Mark Twain's Life and Writings. The theme for the 2020 Mark Twain Festival is women, the women in his life and the women in his stories. I personally enjoy having the medical affliction referred to as Twainitis syndrome, which causes those infected to develop a physical resemblance to Mark Twain, in addition to causing his voice to change into a Missouri accent. An additional similarity between Mark Twain and me is that both Mark Twain and I each raised three daughters. I raised my own and I understand why Mark Twain drank bourbon. Hmm. Samuel Clemens was born in April 1835 in the small town of Missouri called Florida. The family moved to nearby Hannibal when he was nearly a toddler, and he spent his youth in Hannibal, a town along the Mississippi River, during the height of the steamboat days. This town impacted him immensely and he had many memorable childhood experiences during his youth until his father died when he was 12 and left the family bankrupt. His friends and experiences were the inspiration for the characters and events in his classic novels, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Both Tom and Huckleberry characters were based on his memories of two childhood friends, and you may be familiar with a female character in those books, Rebecca Thatcher. Not surprisingly, Becky was also based on a real girl, Laura Hawkins, who just happened to buy young Samuel Clemens's childhood girlfriend. I will now share with you my research on Laura Hawkins. Laura Hawkins was a real person and lived in Hannibal, Missouri for most of her life. Her family lived close to the Clemens home and she and young Samuel Clemens were childhood friends and even sweethearts. She was born in 1837 in Georgetown, Kentucky. Laura Hawkins was only a few years old when a family moved to Hannibal, Missouri, where they lived in a two-star frame house on Hill Street across from the Clemenses. She and Sam were childhood playmates, classmates, and sweethearts. They attended the local school together, but Sam dropped out after the death of his father when he was 12. While Sam moved out to work and helped support the family in 1853, Laura Hawkins continued school and attended Van Rensselaer Presbyterial Academy in Rensselaer, Missouri. In 1858, she married James W. Frazier from 1835 and died in 1875, a physician with whom she had two sons. In 1895, she became a matron of a Hannibal home for orphans and the indigent. Sam visited with her in Hannibal in 1902 and again in Reading, Connecticut in 1908. The visits gained Laura popularity as Sam was now the famous Mark Twain and his visit, particularly to Hannibal, generated a lot of press coverage. During the early 1920s, Laura even traveled across the country and appeared on radio shows talking about her early life with young Sammy. She lived to be 91 and passed away December 25th, 1928, at the home of her son, a local judge, in the same home of her youth. Her childhood home is now restored and an integral part of the Mark Twain Museum. Laura Hawkins was the real life Rebecca Becky Thatcher and had a tremendous influence in Sam Clemens' writings. Twain portrayed her as Becky Thatcher in The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. He also used her name for one of the principal characters in The Gilded Age. Becky Thatcher, the leading lady in The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, 
is a wealthy young love interest to Tom Sawyer. Becky is the daughter of Judge Thatcher. Her long blonde hair is always worn in braids. Tom wins her, she wins Tom's love for the first moment he sees her. When Becky first encounters Tom, she gives him a pansy to show her love. Becky Thatcher soon became engaged to Tom Sawyer, sealing their engagement with a kiss on the lips. <sighs> Becky is first introduced on the porch of her father, Judge Thatcher's house. Placed on figurative pedestal, the porch of a large white house, Becky represents the unattainable aristocratic woman. Tom, who is not considered to be the model boy in town, uses an array of tactics, beginning with acrobatics to court her. Quote, he worshipped this new angel with a furtive eye till he saw that she had discovered him. Then he pretended he did not know she was present and began to show off in all sorts of boyish ways in order to win her admiration. End quote. During the first encounter, Becky essentially plays hard to get and walks back into the house pretending not to even notice him. Later on, when they get to school, Tom tries once again to win her favor by using his skills as an artiste and drawing a picture. <coughs> Excuse me, gotta stop those cigars someday. The picture consisting of just a house Conceive, succeeds in sparking further interest and gains her undivided attention. Becky also asked him to add a picture of a man. Quote, the artist erected a man in the front yard that resembled a Derrick. He could have stepped over the house, but the girl was not hypocritical. She was satisfied with the monster and whispered, it's a beautiful man, now make me coming along. Having successfully won her over with his artistic skills, skills obviously not finely tuned just yet, he proceeds to tell her he loves her and asks her to marry him. <coughs> oh, excuse me again. Now, it's all done, Becky, and always after this, you know, you ain't never gonna love anybody but me, and you ain't ever gonna marry anybody but me. Never and never forever, will you? After he receives a confirmation and goes on about the benefits of such an arrangement, he blunders and tells her about how he had a similar arrangement with another girl, Amy Lawrence. <gasps> this infuriates Becky to the point of tears where she slaps away a mock ring and refuses anyone any attempts to assuage her. In return, Tom storms off to participate in some adventures. Uh, not being able to get Becky out of his mind, he gets worried about the fact that Becky has stopped coming to school. He starts loitering around her father's house and discovers that she was sick. Quote, she was ill. What if she were to die? There was distraction in this thought. He had no longer took interest in war or even piracy. The charm of life was gone and there was nothing but dreariness left. Becky's illness results in a reappraisal of his values, end quote. In an effort to regain her attention, Tom tries again, doing all the heroic things she can conceive of, which included going on like an Indian, yelling and laughing and chasing boys, jumping over the fence at the risk of life and limb, throwing handstands, standing on his head. Becky remains unimpressed, turns her nose in the air and snides, snides, Muff! some people think they're mighty smart, always showing off. In an air of dignity, Becky teaches Tom that boyish tricks will not work and if he wants to win her, it will have to be with something more serious. Tom finally wins over Becky's heart for good. First, not telling her on her for sneaking into the teacher's office and looking at the anatomy book and accidentally tearing one of its pages. <clears throat> and second, most importantly, taking the blame and getting whipped for it. In effect, 
Tom shows his support for Becky's dangerous interest in books. Now, I got a little bit to know about books over the years, Brad. The relationship is sealed once again in a cave when Tom prevents, presents Becky with a wedding cake. When the two of them are at their most vulnerable, Tom is allowed to save the day for Becky and they live happily ever after. The correlations between Clemens' courtship of Olivia and Tom's courtship of Becky are astounding. <clears throat> Otherwise, aspects of all these real life figures can be seen some way or another in Becky. Apparently, Twain even sent an invitation to Laura Hawkins Frazier announcing his upcoming wedding to Olivia in 1870. She did not attend, but the invitation is still in the family archives. In 1910, she was interviewed in a Hannibal newspaper. I'll read from that article. Mrs. Frazier recalled to memory the th things that happened when she and Mark attended school together. <coughs> Sam and I started going to school the same year and he was seven and I was six. <coughs> we lived opposite each other on Hill Street. Sam had long golden curls hanging over his shoulders at that time. He used to carry books to school every morning and bring me them home for me in the afternoon. And occasionally he would treat me to apples, oranges, and such things, or divide his candy with me. In the winter, when the creeks or the river were frozen, Sam spent a greater part of his time on the ice. I couldn't skate, but he always arranged for me to go along in the crowd. He used to push me along on the ice in a split bottom chair. He was a fine skater, too. In fact, he was good at anything he undertook. I remember the last time I saw Sam when he was a boy. It was just before he left Hannibal for the last time. We were skating on Bear Creek, and I distinctly recall that I had trouble in getting on one of my skates, and Sam performed the services very beautifully. The first time I ever saw Sam was on a hot summer day. He came out of his house opposite mine and started showing off, turning handsprings and cutting capers just as described in Tom Sawyer. I remember one time when we were riding saplings and I was thrown to the ground and knocked unconscious. I recall hearing children talking about how badly Sam was scared. Mrs. Frazier is a gentle and winsome lady with wavy, rebellious gray hair, eyes that glow like those of a young girl, and a charm of manner that makes everyone love her. Long before Mr. Clemens was married, she became the wife of Al Frazier, now deceased. She has been the matron of the home for the friendless here in Hannibal for many years, and there could be no more worthy one. Now, I visited Hannibal in 2018, the week before the Here Now 2018 festival. The spirit of Mark Twain is prevalent throughout the town, and I was pleased to have had an opportunity to visit the Becky Thatcher house, located across the street from the Mark Twain house and whitewashed fence. The Becky Thatcher house was the childhood home of Laura Hawkins and her family. It has been fully restored and is used as an educational facility for children with games and displays on childhood life in the 19th century. It is a fitting tribute to both Laura Hawkins and Mark Twain. Thank you very much for allowing me to read and I'll throw in a plug. There's my own book on catching Twininus syndrome by Rob Alvey. Thank you again.